All right, welcome everybody. This is Barney Kunsi, uh, founder and creator of the Wild Success Summit and gold leader from Ontario, Canada. Uh, welcome to the bonus coaching call for today. Um, we are going to be talking about some very interesting material with Stacy Hall, um, how to be a light, lighthouse. And um, she's always got a very unique perspective on just things that are talked about often. But I find what I love about Stacy's content is just that she has a very simple way of looking at uh, sometimes making things that can't kind of seem complex or just simplifying them and getting down to brass tacks. So uh, without before we get started with Stacy, um, as she's gearing up, I'm sure she's probably got some oils lined up over there getting ready to go. Um, I wanted to show you guys, <laughs> <laughs> am I right, Stacy? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> uh, two diffusers going at opposite ends of the room. Absolutely. Uh, there you go. Um, so before we get rolling, I had a question, um, and Jennifer was asking just to clarify. So I wanted to show you all um, if I actually don't know how to log out from here. But once you guys, once you log in, when you go to um, wildsuccesssummit.com forward slash login, um, it'll take you to the login screen. And then you just put in your username and your password, which is in your email, um, emails that get sent to you, um, or hopefully you've saved it. Um, you go to continue, I'm already logged in, so it's just going to take me right back to where I was, which is the dashboard. Um, and so these calls are all going to be available under the 2016 um, side. And so when I click on 2016, because um, if you don't, if you didn't buy the 2015, when you click on it, it'll just say, hey, you don't have access to this. Um, and the, where they are right now, so here is all of the content um, as it was when we were live during the summit. So there's day one through 14. And um, you'll be able to find it under the bonus coaching call. So when you click on it here, now right now there's a, a bit of a weird bug in the server that we're hosting on. And it's restricting us from putting up one of the videos. Um, and you can see that when I go, they're all organized by the month. Um, and so if I click on there's the train again. If I go to December, um, you can see this is Jacob's call, um, and it works just like a video. So you can click on it and just play the video. <laughs> I'm in a new office space, and it's great hearing the train in the background. Um, and anyway, so you'll be able to see the uh, recordings in here, and it's in a video. Um, and for whatever reason, the one that the one that we did with. Uh, James Lawrence or the Iron Cowboy was not showing up for some reason. So Stacy's call, as soon as we get everything all set up, um, it'll show there's just a, a placeholder here right now. But you'll be able to find Stacy's call um, in January 2017 and then also Cy Young, um, uh, one of the founding members of iToby, is going to be on, I believe it is next week. And so we're gonna, I'm going to clarify that for you guys at the end of our call. Um, so make sure you stay to the end of the calls. We've got some more exciting details about a relaunch of the summit this year and how you guys can continue to rally your team members and anybody else that you know that needs to get um, or continue to stay engaged by utilizing all the amazing content that we have on the summit. And so anyway, so I just wanted to show you that. That's where you can go. Um, and remember that you can always still go back here to the 2016 day one to 14 presentations and you can listen online if you haven't downloaded your content um, from the site or if you didn't buy the flash drive then you can always click on here just click on the day and you can go in and um, just click on the presentation that you want to watch or view okay so without further ado uh, I'd like to say officially welcome Stacy and thank you so much for taking and carving time out of your schedule to share with us what you're going to share with us today Barney, I have to tell you, it doesn't require carving out my schedule. What I'm going to share today is really the, the whole aim of my entire life. It's a commitment I made to God once I received these divine inspirations that I would write them down and share them with anybody who would want to receive them. And I honor you for giving me the opportunity to fulfill my purpose today. So thank you so much. Yes, you are more than welcome. Um, I, so I've got my screen up. Are you yeah, able yeah, to I'm gonna, see it? Yeah, I'm going to change the presenter to you. All 
right, and I will um, stop periodically to see if anybody uh, got questions. So, Barney, would you be willing over this hour, if I say I'm stopping for questions, if anybody wrote in the chat box to let me know the questions? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'll, I'll make sure I moderate the, um, the chat box, and also if other people are coming in on, uh, I get emails sometimes too, people that send in questions during the call, so I'll, uh, I'll let you know. And then okay, you, should, beautiful. Yeah, you should be good to go there. And then? Okay, so everybody can see the screen the, the, with the lighthouse. Um, yeah, everybody's I, able to see that. I can't see it. I, I've got it up on my screen, yeah. the, the PowerPoint. No, nope, I can't see it either. So go. All right, so Barney, how do we? Yeah, are you on two? How do, we do, you have, do, that? do you have two screens? When when you go okay, to. Okay, I see. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I was supposed to download something. Okay, yeah. I let's see. It'll just take how a second. How quick this will happen? You got it now? Um, I don't I don't see it yet on my end, but you can you can just click on it, or did it did it disappear? Well, how about if it doesn't I can, come up? I yes, can see it now. Oh, good. Oh, well, maybe it's just a delay on my end then. Okay, so I'm going to trust that everybody can see it. Yep. Just, yep, we're good? I think so. It might just be a there little delayed is. on my end. There it is. All right, well, we're going to let's see if, if in the chat box if anybody's still having trouble. Um, I may just ask Barney to take it back over, but let's go ahead and get started. So this, I'm going to honor my father. My father had a fascination with lighthouses. And he suffered a stroke and, and then lived for another five years. And during that period of time, I became aware of just how much he was fascinated by lighthouses. He, he collected them and he had them all over. And I started exploring what does it mean to be a lighthouse. And I received an inspiration that I'm going to give to each of you before we go any further. And so I'm going to invite you wherever you are to go ahead and put your feet flat on the earth, uncross your arms and your legs, and close your eyes because you're not going to require yourself to take notes about what I'm going to do. This is just an experience to get started. Go ahead and take a few deep breaths and in your vision with your eyes closed, take yourself to the beach. A gorgeous, beautiful shoreline and as you look out over the ocean, you'll be able to see the boats, the ships, further out on the horizon. You're going to see people surfing, skiing, water skiing. On the beach itself, you're going to see people playing volleyball, kids with their parents, sho you know, shoveling creating sandcastles, running around. It is a perfect day at the seashore. And take a look at one end or the other. It doesn't matter which end. But there at the end where the sea starts to come up to the shore and the shore is a bit rocky, you'll see that there's a lighthouse on the cliff overlooking the seashore. Now when you look back out over the water, notice that there are storm clouds beginning to get created at the horizon line. It's kind of gray and black. And as you're watching, you can see these clouds building and building and building. And now you can probably even start to feel the breeze, like that salt air hitting your face. And the umbrellas that were up to protect from the sun, the people are starting to take those down because they're falling over in the sand. And the waves are increasing. 
And so the families are packing up their picnics and getting the kids bundled up in their towels to go to the car because it's very clear this is going to be a very big storm. And so the beach is getting cleared very quickly. And as you look out over the water again, you're going to notice that half the sky is gray and black now. And those, those raindrops are getting bigger and bigger. And now the, the skiers are coming in, and the smaller boats are coming back into the shore. And people are putting on their windbreakers. And pretty much the shore itself has been cleared of people. And all that's out on the sea are the bigger boats. And it's pretty black now, and it's really rainy. So I'm going to invite you to go over to the lighthouse, climb up the stairs, and in the room at the top, where the windows are, where you can look out, get yourself there as quick as you can so that you can stay warm and dry. And when you're comfortable there, look out over the sea, and you'll notice that some of the boats are making their way into your harbor. Others are not. And I want you to hold on, because the lighthouse sees this too. And unfortunately, this lighthouse doesn't have a lot of confidence in itself. It thinks it's not doing a good enough job of helping those boats come into sea, come into the harbor from the sea. So right now it's sprouting legs and it's going to start to move. So strap yourself in and you're going to see it moving up and down the shoreline attempting to get the attention of those ships and boats out of the sea. And you might be getting a little nauseous as it's running back and forth transforming itself from being a lighthouse into a searchlight. And i got to tell you that what's happening to those boats is they're confused. They thought the harbor was in one place. Now they can't tell in the darkness because the light's going back and forth. And they're starting to bang into each other. Some have capsized and others are just frozen out there not knowing where the safe place is to come in. So I'm asking you to grab that lighthouse. You can take control of the lighthouse. And you, with your energy, bring it back to its own place on the cliff. And you tell the lighthouse, this is where you belong. All you have to do is put your light out so that those who need the safety of your light to come into a safe place can easily find you. That's what a lighthouse does. The lighthouse doesn't worry that there's another lighthouse a few miles down the coastline. It knows that when people need that harbor, that lighthouse will be there to serve that harbor. The lighthouse doesn't compare its stripes or its markings on its tower to another lighthouse's markings. They're all different but they're all equal. It doesn't compare its light to someone else's light. It just does its job where it's been planted. So I'm going to ask you to consider when you're building your own Young Living team, when you're attempting to attract people to your team, what percentage of time are you the lighthouse and what percentage of time are you being the searchlight? And if being a searchlight is any less than 100%, then you're in the best place right now to learn how to transform yourself to be the lighthouse who stands strong, who trusts that its light is going out, and is consistent in staying put with its own message, with your own message, knowing that the people who are destined to be served by you will be able to find you much more easily if you're not running up and down the beach. 
So I'm just going to stop here. Barney, any questions, comments coming in yet? Barney? Yep, I just had myself muted Are there. Still but there? Yep. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Any okay. questions, comments? Uh, no, nothing other than um, uh, one lady, Joyce, had mentioned to, if you wanted to put your your PowerPoint in uh, presentation mode, then it'll look nice and clean. Um, oh, okay. Well, <laughs> if you, but you, that it, would probably be a good idea. Yeah, so, it, it, um, it looks great. See. It looks great. You just go to the bottom right-hand corner. I apologize, folks. I'm looking at where to do that. Just go to the bottom right-hand corner. Say right, The bottom right-hand corner of your screen where you see the plus oh. and minus sign. And just hit that yes. little, that little yes. thing beside it. The little logo about, there. Okay, there we go. Okay, so everybody yep. should see it now. Is it good? Okay, yep, that's working. Yep. All right, I, I apologize so. for the lack of technology yep. mastery today. Right. All right, so I, the questions, go ahead. I was just going to say it was great. I think I was just going yes, along Barney? the journey, and I think it was a great visualization. Beautiful. I have been sharing that visual visualization for more than 20 years. As I said, I first received it from God for myself when I was questioning whether I was fulfilling my purpose or not because I wasn't getting a whole lot of response. What was I doing wrong is what I used to ask. And I asked for God to show me how to do it right. And my father's collection of lighthouses spoke to me to stop questioning if I was doing it right and simply trust that I was and that people would find me if I was consistent. If I kept my own light bright, they would find me. So the qu next question is to ask ourselves, who do we want to share the oils with? And you, we may say all of these people, close friends, church members, family members, salon owners, but I'm going to ask you to consider if you're going to choose a spot on the beach for your lighthouse, choose one of these to start with. Because the message that goes out is important that it be honed for one of these groups. Because how we would speak to close friends is not likely to be the way we would speak to a salon owner unless they were a close friend. We want our light to be as brilliantly bright for the people who see it so that they know here's the harbor that's perfect for me to come into. And if we attempt to speak to all people the same way, we're just going to confuse them. Are you talking to me as a salon owner? Are you talking to me as a friend? If I'm a church member, are you talking to me in a way that appeals to my spirituality? It is possible to serve more than one audience but not with the same message. So my invitation to you is to choose one. And if you have questions for me about how to choose, I'm here. So Barney, just let me know if anybody asks about that. We're going to go on, but I'm happy to come back. Yep, I think we're good for now. As you begin to hold... Okay, good. As we begin to hone in on the kinds of people or the group of people that we choose to serve in our harbor, we want to be asking ourselves, how is it that they would be interested in the oils? If we know why they'd be interested in the oils, then we can hone our message to them. If we know what their goals are, 
And I'm going to say this very specifically. Oftentimes people will tell us they want to be business builders. Barney, I know you and I have had this conversation. I don't get excited when someone tells me they want to be a business builder. Before I get excited, I ask them, do you have any sales experience? Because for all this talking about all we have to do is share, that's a very nice word for selling. Because at some point, there will be the opportunity to ask somebody to buy. And if we ask someone to buy, that's selling, no matter how nicely we do it. And if somebody does not feel comfortable asking someone to buy the oils, then there's some work for them to do, some training for them to do, before they're really going to be a business builder. So I want to know what are their goals and how prepared they are to achieve their goal so I know whether I can be of service to them. Am I the right harbor for them? If they don't want to be a business builder, that's fine. Then, you know, there's different slips in my harbor. So they'll go all over this area of my harbor where they just want to use the oils, and that's cool. And then there'll be some who will be in this area of my harbor who want to eventually share the oils, but they want some training first. And then there'll be the people in this part of my harbor that are more than ready to start sharing, and they do. I also want to think about the personality traits of the people who are going to fit into each one of those areas of my harbor. I want to think about how they treat other people. And I want to think about how they treat their self. This all helps me to identify who's going to be the perfect fit for my message. Making sense, Barney? Barney, still there? Yeah, it just seems to take a couple more seconds to unmute myself, but it's sure. Me? Okay. It sure is, yeah. Okay. Any comments, any questions at this point? No, everybody Everybody's still with us. Everybody's still with us. So keep the people are coming in by the minute. Okay, beautiful. Now, I want to share with everybody how do we keep our light high? How do we keep it fully charged? Even on those days where we open up our downline report and there's no new numbers there. Because that happens to all of us. Except maybe a Krill Diamond. But no matter what level you're at, there might be some days where there's no orders and there's no new members. Are we going to let that affect us and transform us back into searchlights? I say no. What we're going to do instead is we're going to remember what's the most important thing in the world to us. So I'm going to give you just a moment in silence to think about what gets you out of bed in the morning. And I'll be right back. So what is it that gets you out of the bed in the morning? Because whatever that is, it's the most important thing in the world to you. And as long as you can do that, everything else doesn't actually matter. It puts everything in perspective. So rather than judging ourselves as to whether or not we're doing all that's required to be a royal crown diamond. The question is, I got out of bed today. What do I want to do with this day? Why did I allow myself to get out of bed instead of laying in bed and feel sorry for myself over something? When we focus on what's the most important thing in the world to us, 
That's how we turn the light in our spirit on. That attracts people to us who want to experience that. And I want to share with you that what's most important in the world to me, and this might sound cliche, I understand that, I'll explain it a little more in a moment. The most important thing in the world to me is to make God smile. By helping to make other people smile that much more. That's why I get out of bed. And I'm going to tell you that I had an experience once where I was pretty sure I had not made God smile. I felt it in my spirit. I felt horrible after an engagement with a group of people. And I came back and I prayed and I meditated and I said, Dear God, what, why do I feel so crab, crummy here? I was going to say a different word, but I'm going to go with crummy. And what I heard was, is because you didn't lift those people's spirit. So my invitation to you is, if you choose to attract people to your team, are you showing up like a lighthouse with your light brilliant? On Facebook, are the posts that you share reflective of what's most important in the world to you? I make sure that every post that I post on my profile page leaves people smiling that much more if they choose to. I'm known for that. Are you known for what's most important in the world to you? Are you known for every post on your page to be about healing if the most important thing in the world to you is to help people boost their wellness? If the most important thing in the world to you is to share Young Living Oils, is every post on your page a compliant post about the benefits of the Young Living Oils? If the most important thing in the world to you is your family, your children, is every post on your page something about how much you love your family, your children? What do you want to be known for? And whatever that is, speak about it, share it. When you're at your gatherings to share the oils, are you a representative of the most important thing in the world to you? When people come to my gatherings, they know that they can expect me to help them smile more. They count on that. And every gathering I create is some way to do that. Is that what your gatherings are about? Let me check in here. Barney, I'll give you a moment or two to come off of mute. Any questions or comments at this no. point? No, no questions so far other than the fact that I totally agree 100%. And do you mind if I share something? Uh, in addition to what I'm saying now. <laughs> okay. So I was driving home from my yeah, fit I would love it. Okay. I was driving home from my fitness club the other day and it's been kind of challenging. Um, I think it's pretty safe to say in this call because I don't think most people that are listening now will um, share this, but it hasn't been made overly public yet, but I'm going to be selling the, I sold my one gym and I'm selling the second one. It's just on, on the way. And I was thinking about it, and I thought, you know, I'm, I'm doing this, and I'm sp going to be spending more time in growing uh, our Young Living business, and we're working towards, our, I mean, our goal was right from when I started was Royal Crown Diamond, and building and growing and expanding our um, reach and influence and impact with the YL Success Summit. And I started thinking about all this, and I thought, you know, what really gives it purpose? Like what, you know, if, if, if one of the questions that I've asked my clients um, and fitness is that if you just had everything taken away and you, what would your perfect picture look like? And I was thinking this whole, this was like a conversation in my head as I was driving home. And I was like, well, what would I do if, um, the way that financially would look that money's really not a concern that it's completely taken care of and what would it look like, you know, so that I can create that and what would I do? And I started laughing because I'm like, I would be doing exactly what I'm doing right now it would just maybe, I'd be maybe wearing some different clothes or in a different vehicle or whatever. But for the most part, I would be doing pretty much exactly what I'm doing. And it would just fuel my passion even that much more. And I just wanted to share that because I think that it's it's very easy to get caught up in 
uh, other things that you can be doing. But I think when you come back, and even if you don't think about it every day like that, in the context that I'm sharing now, um, I really do believe that when you're when you're in that space, and if you're not in that space, but you can envision it, then it makes it more. There's more bounce to your step, and more purpose to the. There's more purpose to the passion, and so on. So I just wanted to say that I think it's very powerful. And what you just said made it even more powerfully brilliant. Thank you, Barney. All right, let's go ahead and go forward. Now let's think about ourselves a little deeper. Really add depth and breadth and width to that beacon of light that you are. I'd love for you each to take a few moments now and I'll be quiet, to think about what are the qualities that make you a leader in your life? What are the gifts that God's given to you? And do your best to simply witness and write them down. In other words, don't judge yourself whether you do them all the time or you don't exhibit them all the time. That doesn't matter. Just Honor, if you would, by writing down a list of what are the talents and the skills and the gifts you've acquired through your life. Because every one of them can be used to be able to attract people to your team. It's what I say makes you an attractive leader. So... Let's take two minutes to write down what are those personality traits, skills, talents, and gifts that you possess. If you're having trouble creating this list, I'm going to invite you to think about what would your best friend say they appreciate about you. So now my question to you is this. Are you developing your Young Living team, your activities around using these traits and skills and gifts? Or are you attempting to do it someone else's way? Are you attempting to be the lighthouse up the road that may have been there longer or happens to be the newest flavor on the seashore, if you will, so everybody's checking out that harbor because it's new or because the things that were built up around that lighthouse happen to look like more fun. You know, just remember, everything eventually evens itself out. Especially if we are known for something. So, for example, what I'm known for 
is being able to help people keep their energy high. That's my lead. I, I learned how to drain my energy to the point of almost dying, and then I learned how to build it back up using my oils and other inspirations that God gave me because I begged for the information, and I, then I promised I'd write it down. That's the lead I'm known for. So people come to me to learn about oils in order to keep their energy high. Why would people come to you? It would be because of what you have been given as a gift, not what someone else has been given that you think is or attractive. Let's be authentic to ourselves. So Barney, any input, questions, comments about that? No, I not no questions, um, but input for myself. You did ask for input, right? <laughs> I sure am. Okay. Yeah. Um, I um, remember when we did this when you came up here last year and did a a workshop for our team and some of the local local other team members as well. And it's funny because I actually have that still in a little piece of paper and I have it in my journal at the front and I just taped it there and every once in a while I'll just kind of look at it. And um, and I think that it's funny because it, it's so interesting when you when you look at somebody else and be like, oh, wow, they're so this or so that. Um, and my one of my, my life coach and, and mentor um, and mastermind group meeting member. Um, he's a local chiropractor, but I haven't seen, we've been at a monthly mastermind for nine years. And he always said that whatever you can recognize as a trait or a quality um, or skills and talents in other people, the only way that you can recognize it in somebody else is that you possess that yourself. You just might not see it in the same form that you recognize it. And so I just share that because I would be like, oh, I don't know if I really see those qualities in myself. But he's like, you couldn't see a quality that you can't recognize in yourself in some form or fashion. And so I actually wrote down my list and then um, and just put a couple and, you know, I don't know, like maybe 10 or 12. And it's funny because I, I when I write it down, it, it it feels interesting where it's like, oh, I'm just writing that about myself. But I look at it and it, it is true. And I just want to say thank you, Stacy, because this is a really, it may seem very simple in essence of just like, well, who are you? And it could seemingly not seem that important, but it is important because if you don't know yourself and can't feel uncertain about the qualities of yourself as a leader or human being, it is hard to guide other people to come to that point. Absolutely. I loved what you said because this is the law of attraction. Often people think it's all woo-woo. Scientifically, quantum physics says energy attracts like energy. We would not have these people in our lives. And I'm going to say this, the people who lift our spirits and the people who don't lift our spirits. Both are in our lives because we reflect some of the same attributes. The more we put the focus on our positive attributes, the less we think about our negative ones, the more we'll attract those positive, uplifting people. And I was one of those people who always thought, well, if I focus on my negative and I attempt to fix them, try to fix them, that will make me a better person. No. What makes us, quote unquote, better people, more attractive people, is focusing on our positive qualities. The more energy that goes into the positive, automatically the less goes into the negative. The more we put on the negative, the more negative we get. So now I'd like you to consider what are your top three goals as a Young Living Leader? Stacy. Oftentimes people will tell me, yes, yes, I, Marty, go ahead. I, I was just going to say before you jump into that, I have a question. Um, from Robin just asking about, could you give an example of draining your energy to almost uh, dying and then reviving yourself or others? Um, sure. Uh, I, it's not I an think, example. It's what happened. I yeah. had uh, – um, yes, go ahead. Yeah, I think that was – I was just – Yeah, this is exactly what happened. I mean, 
Go ahead, Marty. Yeah, yeah. no, I was, I was just going to say if that quite, if it makes sense in the context of what you were talking about there. Well, it has to do with the negativity, so I'll, I'll do it really quick here. Um, I was in a business partnership around the my first book. I wrote a book before she to be called Attracting Perfect Customers, The Power of Strategic Synchronicity. And I'm going to share it with everybody. People are like, oh, I want to go get that book. I'm saying, you can. It's quite old. And what's in my new book, Chi to Be Through Life Science Publishers, which is also on Amazon, is actually what I learned as a result of almost dying. But what happened is I was in a, a, a business relationship for eight years that was extremely demeaning. And I attracted that person because I did not believe in myself. I didn't trust that what God gave me to share with the world, I had the ability to do. And so instead of making God my partner, I made someone else my partner and ultimately wound up giving away my business. And when I realized that, I was so full of shame and upset that it took a toll on my physical wellness as well. And so I wound up with extreme adrenal fatigue. That's what happened. And what also happened is two years and three months into it, I finally got very upset with God. I thought God was punishing me. That was my negative belief system. I learned from that that God never punishes us. We are always inspired forward. But at that, on that day, I yelled and screamed and ranted mm -hmm. and raved at God yep. and said, I tried a couple me. of numbers. I texted him. I tried to be nice and deceptive. <laughs> By, by asking if he um, even wanted yeah. to Yeah, sorry, there's somebody. Are you hearing someone else on this call? If you can hear. Are you able to mute at your end? Or I, unfortunately, I can't because they're on um, a phone. If you're talking on your phone, if you can okay, mute yourself. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to keep on going then. And yeah. um, what I'm going to say is. God answered my prayer. I want to thank you. And said to me that all I had to do was keep watching and answers would come to me. And I responded that if those answers came and they worked, I'd write them down and share them with everyone else. And this is what I'm this is part of what I'm doing today. And the first answer that came was an invitation to an essential oils class where I was introduced to the oils. And to stay compliant, that's as much as I will share. And in my book, She to Be, I go further into what I learned along the way to how to become a powerfully brilliant lighthouse. So thanks, Barney. Let's go ahead and keep going. So the question um, is, what are your top three goals? I know, I know one time our counterpart has, has Excuse me, I'm not sure if you can hear us, but we can hear your okay. phone conversation, okay, darling. If you would go ahead and mute your phone, that would be great. Thanks. Okay, so if you can only accomplish three goals before you leave the earth as a young living leader, what would those be? And I'm going to say there's probably not sufficient time right now for you to consider deeply these goals. So this is what I call a home play invitation. Give yourself time to ask yourself these goals. Start by considering your goal categories. And you know this is where Ula comes in. Ula's done a really fabulous job of helping us understand the areas of our life and how to keep them in harmony because of course it's ridiculous to think that they'll ever be equally in balance but we can harmonize our life by choosing when we're going to put attention on each of these areas next keep a list of the goals as you go through life I like to have a little booklet by me and as I think of a goal, as a goal pops into my head, because I'm one of those people that 
used to like, eh, I got a goal, I'd have to go do it, and then that left this goal over here not done, and ah, created overwhelm for myself. Now I jot down my goals. And when I get back to my computer, I put them under the categories that they fit in. And at the start of every month, literally at the start of every month, I pull out that goals list and I prioritize which goals I'm going to work on that month. I used to plan a year in advance. Doesn't work for me to do that. It works for me to keep my goals written down knowing eventually they'll all get a handle and then schedule a month at a time. Because that's when I can see on my calendar what has to be done before something else can get done. That makes more sense to me. If you have your own way of scheduling and it's working for you, go for that. But if you're not being able to schedule for success and you think that you're procrastinating, or you think that there's not enough time to do everything you want to do, if you're fall into either one of those categories or you're constantly feeling overwhelmed by all there is to do, I'm going to suggest that you might want to play, explore, and discover my system. And then choose for the month what are the top three goals you want to accomplish for that month or at least work on for that month. And as you look at the first goal, and I hope everybody's got a smile on their face now, a little baby, learning how to play, explore, and discover with walking. What are two activities you could do this month that would move you closer towards the fulfillment of the first goal? Just two. What are two actions you could take? Give yourself credit for being on this call. That was one action you've taken, probably towards all three of your goals. But just what are two you could do this month that would make you feel you took action towards your first goal? What are two actions you could take towards achieving your second goal this month? And when I talk about actions, I'm talking about something you can actually put on your calendar with a start and end time. So people will say to me, oh, I want to develop my website. Okay, great. What has to get done? Oh, I have to get a website. Okay, beautiful. That's the ultimate goal. What's an activity that you can schedule time for? Is it to research websites? So. On next Wednesday from 1 to 2 p.m., you could block that out to research websites. Or if the goal is to attract, like I want to attract six new members to my team this month. Wonderful. What's an activity that would do that? Oh, I'm going to hold a class. Great. So the class can get scheduled from this time to that time on your calendar. But then what are two activities you're going to do, such as mail out invitations? Let's get those scheduled on the calendar, too. From this time to this time, I'm going to send out invitations. Buy refreshments. Cool. From this time to this time, I'm going to go to the store and buy the refreshments. This is how we manage the amount of time we have by actually putting it on the calendar and not holding it in our mind. And then two actions you'll take towards the third goal. Same thing. What are two actions that can actually be put on the calendar? Knowing that by doing them, you are moving yourself closer to the fulfillment of your third goal. Now I'm going to say this to you. 
if all you could work on this coming month were these three goals, you might say to me, Stacy, I have a whole lot more goals that have to get done than that. And I'm going to say, really? Are you sure? Are you sure that those other goals can't fit inside of one of these three? For example, if you have three goals for your young living business, but then you also have a goal for raising your children, I'm going to ask you to take a look at your goals for raising your children. Do they fit under one of your goals for your young living business? Or does your young living business, one of those goals, fit under raising your kids? Too often I see people compartmentalize. Like they start with different compartments. But then they're not looking at, if I have this one goal, how many other goals will it help me to achieve? That's how we leverage our time and our energy. If I work on this goal, how many other goals can I be working on at the exact same time just by focusing on this one? So, Barney, I'm going to check in. Any comments, questions? Thoughts. Yeah, for sure. You can hear me now? Yes, I sure can. Okay. So um, <clears throat> there was a lady just saying here um, that this is, that she just said that this is meant for me to hear today. Thank you. It still brings me back to the learning, um, to learning to value and believe in myself. And I thought I learned how, but apparently not yet. Still attracting the, the wrong type of people. Um, and not by not knowing her talents and then I just wrote back and said that's good that's why we're doing this call and these calls um, <laughs> <laughs> you know because I'm pretty sure it's not just her that's feeling that way or has felt that way um, and then one other comment and I wanted you to just expand on this a bit before you finish off here um, is um, she said that this seems the harder I try the more I stay where I am I'm, I'm not able to make myself do what I need to do so I'd like you to just share a little bit about that. Absolutely. The more we focus on what we're not doing, the more not doing we get. So in my book, Chi to Be, one of the ways that I keep my energy high and my light brilliant, I share, is I go ape on myself. A-P-E, go ape. Sounds silly? It's silly. And as often as I can throughout the day, and I don't tell anybody else when I'm doing it or what I'm saying, I appreciate myself. So, Stacy, I appreciate you for practicing your fitness exercises this morning. Stacy, I appreciate you for taking your nutritional supplements. Stacy, I appreciate you for putting together the PowerPoint, learning how to put it into presentation mode in front of everybody, being willing to play and explore and discover. All day long, I am appreciating myself. The more appreciation I give to myself, the more I feel good about myself. The more I feel good about myself, the more creative, the more inventive, the more I feel like I'm moving forward. Barney, you said earlier that something you do sounds so simple. That's what I want everybody to know. The simpler, the better. The more complicated something is, the more the mind has to get involved. The mind is a filing cabinet. The simpler we keep things, the more our heart and our spirit is involved. So to the person who wrote, you feel like you're getting further behind, please take a moment and think about how much you tell yourself you're fully behind versus how often you give yourself encouragement and praise. And there's one other 
tip I offer in my book, I offer lots of tips, but another one that's going to go along with this is remember we're organic creatures. Anything we choose to do has to go through a growth cycle. And just like a rose bush, it's going to go through a seeding stage, a sprouting stage, and a blooming stage. And I know I'm mixing metaphors here with the lighthouse, but it's this is another metaphor to keep our energy high. Just because we can't see those seeds under the ground getting nourished and growing until it becomes a sprout doesn't mean it's not growing. The more I tell myself when I'm not seeing results yet that my seeds are growing, the faster I eventually see the sprout. It is that simple. So to all of you who have put seeds in the ground and they haven't sprouted yet, or they've sprouted and you wanted a bloom before it, the plant was ready and strong enough to give you a bloom, please make a note. Goals go through growth cycles. And the growth cycle may take longer than you'd like it to, it's still going to go through a growth cycle. Can you keep your energy high while you go through that growth cycle? My book, Chi to Be, and you can go to my website, chi to be.com, or be an attraction master.com, which is there in the lower right hand corner of the PowerPoint. Either one of those will take you to my free tips and my book to go deeper with this process. All right, we only have a moment or two, so now what? What you've just created is your strategic attraction plan. Each one of the slides helped you create your plan. During every day, begin to pay attention to what you like and don't like in your interaction with other people. Spending more time focusing on what you like and less time on what you don't like. The more you can start to celebrate that you've attracted interactions that make you feel good, I promise you, the less you'll attract people who don't make you feel good. Now, family is a whole different story. <laughs> And that may take longer for you to transform that. But I'm going to tell you it's a process. Seeding, sprouting, and then blooming. Every night at least, acknowledge yourself for what you accomplished during the day. Make a note, put it by your bedside to remind you that as you fall asleep, you're going to acknowledge yourself if you didn't do it any other time during the day. Every morning, Wake up and set what I call your attractive intentions for the day. That is saying to yourself, I am a powerfully brilliant lighthouse and I'm putting my light out to the world. I am a powerfully brilliant lighthouse and I am attracting the boats I'm meant to serve. And then keep the day going, energized. Keep your light shining brilliantly by declaring other I am statements. I am a master attractor. I am a Young Living Royal Crown Diamond member in development. I am attracting all I require to achieve my goals with velocity and ease. And if this doesn't feel realistic to you, then I'm going to ask you to add this phrase. There is a real possibility that I'm a master attractor. Let your mind believe that there's a possibility it could happen. There's a real possibility that I am a Young Living Royal Crown Diamond member in development. There is a real possibility that I'm attracting all I require to achieve my goals with velocity and ease. There is a real possibility that. I'm going to invite you to add depth and breadth to this by creating strategic attraction plan sharing parties with your Young Living team members. Share with your friends. 
who may know people who fit the qualities of this plan you just created and can refer you to those people. And if you want to make your plan even more attractive to prospective team members, keep your light shining bright. I'm offering you a free gift, and that's a subscription to my weekly attraction tips blog. And you can get it at g2b.com, and you'll also get a free audio coaching program as a bonus. And visit beanattractionmaster.com where I created a short video for you for free on how to become a master at strategic attraction planning. Barney, back over to you for wrapping up. Yeah, that was great. <clears throat> Stacy. I had um, somebody who's asking a question um, all the way from Australia. Uh, what would be a Yay. good oil? Oh, yeah. uh, what would be a good oil to support uh, the growth cycle. So as you were t saying that to go through the growth cycle, so what would be some good suggestions when they're feeling the, the pull? Oh, of the... I love that question. Yeah. Okay. Well, if you want to tie ULA to Chi to B, I'd use Grow. ULA Grow, for sure. As um, in addition, I would, and I do use, so magnify your purpose. Magnify, as in the brilliant light, right? Light your fire, light my fire. I always, I think it's light your fire to get that light burning bright. Envision to be able to brighten the light so I can see into the future and into the future. Those are my favorite blends for getting my plan started. When you're working with the categories of your goals, use your ULA oils. They created the categories right there. So as you're developing your goals for your family, inhale family. Goals for having fun. Inhale fun. I love how Gary created that line. And in fact, at one time, as you know, I think everybody knows that I created the attraction oil anointing technique that I taught at the conventions for three years in a row. And we wanted to have a line of the chi to be oil. And basically Mary Young said, either use the everyday oils or use the oil oils. They are very complementary to the oil anointing technique. And if anybody um, wants to join that group, it's free, it's on Facebook, and it's called the attraction technique. Just attraction technique on Facebook. If you want to have access to my meditations on what to do with oils to help you develop your attraction plan. Great question. Yeah, I agree. So Barney, back to you. Yeah, no, I was just saying, um, uh, Matu and Pauline were saying that side that they can't get the Ula oils in Australia, but the others are available, which is good. So I was going to um, just suggest and recommend there's a couple um, grounding um, typically when I feel that you know I'm in the growth stage uh, and I feel like you know maybe it's a little like I'm walking through mud I like to use grounding and envision um, and also <laughs> <laughs> grounding envision and uh, gratitude are three that I really like um, I just find that they're they're really good I do too, and I'm going to throw another one out here. Surrender. If we truly want to let God or the divine energy, if that's, I don't want to offend anybody, to me it's God. Sometimes I get caught up in the trap of knowing better than God does what I want in my life. <laughs> and that's what got me in trouble in the first place, physically, emotionally, and mentally. So surrender is a great place to begin. And if you can get valor, surrender and valor together. So surrender and the courage to surrender so I can let God work in my life. Yeah, my uh, 
my unmuting problem has persisted here, so I was just a little delayed. But, but yeah, I think those are those are all great. And, and I was just going to offer my uh, closing comment and thoughts on that with the oils. I have it's common that I think pretty much we all get asked the question like, oh, what would be good oil for this or good oil for that? Usually, when it's somebody who doesn't know how to use oils at all, it's easy to give them direction. But I find that for fellow oilers or people who are experienced in using the oils, the best thing that um, that I found works and it's usually pretty consistent. And then somebody asks a question, well, what would you use for this? And I'm like, well, I, I don't know. I'm just curious. What do you think? What would be a good idea? And I'd ask them the question back. I'm like, well, I was kind of thinking like one, two or three. I'm like, well, you should probably try using them. Um, just because I believe if you just use your intuition or let, yeah, you know, you could say it another way, let God guide you in your uh, choices and decisions, then it takes the pressure off of like feeling as though uh, you're going to pick the wrong oil. Um, and I'm not saying that, uh, Matu was asking that or suggesting I just was curious based on experience and I know Stacy have a lot of experience with using the oil so it's great but I was just going to leave that as a tip that sometimes it just takes the pressure off when you can just uh, go with your first gut instinct or intuition 100% agree and I just want to do a quick shout out uh, let's see if I can find it Jennifer um, has just asked to join the attraction technique group so Jennifer if you're still on the line thanks and I've added you to the group so thank you for that and yes it is all about intuition I'm just going to say oftentimes people don't trust their intuition because they're so used to being in their minds and so it doesn't matter if you feel like you're connected to your intuition or you simply <clears throat> use Gary Young's guidance for what the oil blends actually say and then the last thing is, if all you have is lavender, if that's the only oil you have, use it and put your intention into it. And if you don't have any oils yet, which I don't think we're speaking to anybody here on this call that wouldn't have oils, but you know, sometimes you might be working with folks or helping to support folks who don't have oils. Gary Young says, all you have to do is think of the oil. So if somebody has an experience of lavender, all they have to do is think of lavender or peppermint or lemon. Just have them think about what those plants or those fruits or that oil represents to them and use that power to lift your energy. Because all plants, and if they're grown correctly, will lift our energy. And that's how they work so well. Any other questions or comments? I want to make sure we get everybody addressed here. Um, I have about another 10 minutes to be with all of you. Yeah, I think everybody was just commenting. They were very appreciative. Jennifer was saying, yay, thank you. Um, and uh, Matthew and Pauline all the way from Australia said they've got to get going down, down under. I guess they've got to get on with their day. <laughs> uh, but yeah, just a lot of thank people yeah, being really yeah, appreciative. It was great to have them. Really appreciative. Um, and I was just going to mention that the next call, um, first of all, this is for those of you who came in late, this will be recorded and put up in the members area in the back end uh, or the members area of the Wild Success Summit. So you just go to wildsuccesssummit.com forward slash login. And also uh, next week, so you can mark the Save the date right now, uh, January the 26th at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're going to have Cy Young on, who was one of our sponsors and one of the founding members from iToby. Uh, and this is going to be a really good call as well. It's going to be different. But I think that's what I'm really loving about these bonus calls is that everybody's it's, – it's always something different and allows us to dig in a little deeper. So, Stacy, thank you so much. And um, – so I want to say uh, thanks for everybody who carved out the time. If you were listening live, and those of you listening in the future, do your best to get on the call uh, live just because when you can create that space and time in your day, um, you can get more out of it when it's live, but you can always listen to the recording as well. Arnie, it's been a joy to be here with everyone. I'm so glad it was of value. and. If you come into the Attraction Technique group or even my Money Grows on Trees group, we didn't talk about that this time, but we did a presentation for the summit on it. And yeah. Facebook, the Money Grows on Trees is where I talk about oils for increasing your prosperity. 
I'd love to have you in both those groups and I'll chat with everybody there. So thank you. Sounds great. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Stacy.